You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. Welcome back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Kaplan and Crew on the radio airwaves of 1090. On the television airwaves, cable airwaves of Channel 4 San Diego and Santa Barbara, Channel 118 in Orange County and Palos Verdes, our home base, our YouTube channel, at Kaplan and Crew. Get involved in our chat. Come down below and comment. Visit with our sponsors. Uh, so much going on on our YouTube channel. And for anybody who's listening, whenever, wherever, on all of the different audio podcast platform networks, uh, we're really happy to have everybody along. It is a Wednesday here on the show. And the big story that we've been talking about here on Wednesday is Tatis, his injury, what it means to the Padres. We're going to also take a look at the Bellinger injury, what it might mean to the Dodgers, although one seems kind of short-term and one is potentially really long-term. So we're going to get to that. Um, also, coming up, Charlie Hoffman, PGA Tour star, is going to be with us. The only thing is this. This weekend is the Masters, and my man Charlie missed going to the Masters by one stroke. One stroke. This past weekend at the Valero Open down in Texas, he came in second place. By the way, he won like 850 grand um, and missed making it to the Masters by one stroke. So Charlie Hoffman will be here to talk Masters coming up a little bit later on. And for those of you that are watching on TV at this time, stay with us, Charlie Hoffman coming up. Radio listeners, YouTube viewers, Charlie Hoffman on the way. Let me say hola to hermano numero uno, Grande Alejandro, rep in the 805. What's going on? I'd be curious to see because remember you when we talked to Charlie in the Masters five months ago, mm -hmm. he said Dustin Johnson's records don't count because it is a different course in the middle of summer as opposed to how it is now. So I'd be curious to see. He was very blunt. He's like, I don't consider this any any of those records null and void. They don't yeah. count. I wonder yeah. if he says like strong opinions like that. Well, right. Cause the masters of 2020 was only like played five months ago. And so now the masters has gotten itself back on, you know, it's normal time. And so um, Charlie Hoffman was very opinionated. He's like, the greens were totally different. That's why the scores were so high. This past masters doesn't even count. We'll talk to Charlie Hoffman about that coming up. Say good afternoon, everybody to a man, six foot, seven inches tall. He's bringing the street cred from the podcast shed. John Browner, South Side of Chicago. What's up? Hey, Dennis Schroeder. If another man pick you up like that and throw you to the ground, I'd be mad too. What's up, people? Yeah, there you go. All right, we got a lot to get to. And I'm going to try and get to all the big stories. And then we're going to get to Charlie Hoffman. I say try because we go in a direction and then it winds up going in 10 different directions. So let's see how much we can get through. Again, uh, happy to have everybody along. These are the big stories that we're talking about on a Wednesday. They're being brought to us by Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Whether Corky. San Diego, uh, Riverside, or L.A., you got bug problems or rodent problems or termite problems, this is the man to take care of it, Corky's Pest Control. And, yeah, Browner, all right, here goes. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Corky's. All right. Before we get started, I want to let everybody know, especially those of you that are just joining us on radio, or if you're just jumping in on TV, or you just got to the YouTube channel, take a look at my man Grande Alejandro right here. He's rocking that Laker hoodie today, but I want you to know that this man is working through, through some stuff today, people, okay? There's a, <laughs> there's a man who took the second vaccine shot yesterday. He says, headache, manageable. Muscle ache, manageable. Shot in the arm, not as bad as the first one. He's here working today. There is no backup for a man like this. I thought he got hurt when he fell off the bandwagon. Oh, I didn't know you. Oh, you're the second shot. Oh, now I, I, it's so clear to me now. Oh, are you doing okay? You all right? I'm doing just, I'm doing okay. okay. I'm doing okay. okay. I, 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 and Scott, you forgot to mention oh. my tiredness. So oh. Please, hashtag pray for me, okay? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hashtag pray for Alex, right? Because he's fatigued from the second vaccination shot. 
right. yeah. tweet the little hands tweet the little hands <laughs> everyone at alex 86 send me your hashtag pray for me prayers <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go here we go let's start off with the big story the big story from home base san diego the southernmost portion of the southern california mega market the story that everybody's been talking about fernando tatis was hurt two days ago i'll play for you the video of the very violent strike three swing where Tatis was injured. And this is going back two days. The bat comes through, follow through, left hand, bat still swinging, and down he goes. And at the oh, time, painful, right? Right, nobody knew if it was wrist, elbow, or shoulder. We now know shoulder. Shoulder subluxation. Pop. Boom! And that's apparently some form of dislocation. And according to the medical experts that I've been listening to, this will have to be surgically repaired. The question is, can he play with it all year? So yesterday, and this was interesting, um, my phone started buzzing with people that were sending me photographs of Tatis at the University of California, San Diego um, MRI Center, where Tatis was there yesterday getting an MRI. By the way, Fernando, hello, darling. Love the slippers, babe. Are those Crocs? The, I can't tell if they're Crocs. All I know is he, they look fuzzy and warm and comfy and cozy. Dude, I, I don't know if he's by himself or if the little dude in front of him is with him. I can't tell. I can't tell those what are, the deal is. I think those are Crocs. Those do I'm look pretty like sure them. those are Crocs. Yeah, they do look like They're Crocs. just not in X Games mode. He doesn't have the strap on. Mm. All right. Well, People saw him. He was there getting an MRI yesterday. You know? So what's going to happen now with Tatis? They need to send him to Mr. Miyagi. Do that thing with them hands. <laughs> <laughs> like he did Daniel's son. Yeah. I don't listen. I I think I think the actor that played Mr. Miyagi has passed away. But I, I know in the in the Mexican culture, there's curanderos that a couple some olive vera, some spit, and some hail marys, and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. If he wants to try that one too, if we're going to mm -hmm. start trying alternative medicine, I have some some suggestions as well. Yeah. Uh, there's also some CBD that you can get at Tori Holistics. That's a, an option, perhaps. Perhaps yeah. just throwing out ideas. Uh, so here's the most exciting human being on the planet. A.J. Preller, who is the general manager of the Padres. A lot of people close to him call him Mr. Personality. I think it's a fitting name, frankly. Uh, here's what A.J. said yesterday about Tatis going on the 10-day injured list. Let's listen. It's uh, our medical team and Fernando agree, non-surgical, uh, go the route of you know, some rest with, uh, with some, some, some exercises that he can do to help that area, help strengthen that area, um, and, and hopefully look up in 10 days and um, you know, at that point in time, look for him to, uh, to get back on the field and play. So that's, uh, you know, overall, that's, uh, I think a pretty positive report. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, most importantly, he's feeling good today. He, he wants to be in the lineup, but I think, uh, you know, from our standpoint, uh, putting him on the DL, we felt like was the right move, uh, both short and long term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another soundbite from Preller. And, and as soon as we get done listening to this, I'll, I'll be curious to hear both of your opinions as to whether or not you're buying what Preller is selling. Because already in 20 seconds, I have an opinion that I'm not believing anything he's saying. Let's take a listen to the second one. We'll see. I mean, I think with all, with all these injuries, we'll see how he responds over the course of, uh, of, the, of the next, you know, of the next week or so. Um, but honestly, I, I wouldn't rule anything out. You know, I think, uh, you know, this takes him out for the road trip. I think we saw in spring training, you know, I think uh, the last time he had had one of these episodes, he was he was back in, in a day or two and, you know, wanted to be in the lineup. I think, uh, you know, I think from the standpoint, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll evaluate here as we go in the next few days. But, um, you know, I, I don't think we're ruling anything out as far as uh, him being able to come back and play when uh, when he's off the DL in 10 days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. That? Okay. That? Well, um, I know what my instant opinion is based on mm -hmm. listening to that. My my instant opinion is, and this is this is organizational. Okay, look, what are we going to do here? It's it's damage control time, people. Okay, we we built all this excitement. We gave him this big money contract. We've got our fan base truly believing for the first time. Here's what we can't do: we cannot, in the very first homestand of the season. 
within the first five, six games, here's what we cannot do organizationally. We cannot tell people he's out for the season. Not yet. I mean, maybe 10 days from now, we say, you know what? The swellings come down. We're working on some exercises. We're working on some modalities. We're trying to get the guy fixed so we can get him back on the field. He wants to play. I mean, he's like a raging bull. He wants to get out there. But us, we're trying to be conservative with it. We're trying to take our time. Let me tell you what happens in 10 days. They reevaluate. They tell you another 10 days. 10 days later, they reevaluate, give you a little bit more time. And then finally, finally, a month from now, when he hasn't been on the field, they go, you know what? We got to fix it surgically. We got we to repair this thing surgically. It's not getting better. You cannot give up on the hope that you have sold to this fan base this early in the season. And listening to A.J. Preller, I'm more nervous about Tatis now than I was previous to hearing Preller. Browner, what do you think? You know, I believe every word you say it. I really do. I think, though, I think Tatis is ready to play right now. But as an organization with such an investment made in him, you've got to you've got to tell him, hey, we need you to sit down for a couple of days. Rest that arm. We know you've been fighting through this. We know you're going to be OK. We believe you. We just want you to relax a little bit. I believe him. I don't know where all this doubt is coming from. AJ Preller's done a great job building his team. I trust in in AJ. I trust they should put that on the money. Okay, Fox I trust GM. Him. You call it what you want. Winning, he's gonna be winning. GM World Series GM champ. I'm gonna start calling him champ GM at the end of this season. So I, mm. I'm with him. I agree. I don't know why. I don't know why y'all so uh, I said, pessimistic. I've said this on the show before, and and I I truly believe it. I I will never listen to the Padres on an injury ever again, ever. They, they have consistently never been honest with us or not necessarily honest. They just don't ever really tell you what's really going on. They're like, oh, he's on the 10 day DL. And all of a sudden, you know, six months later, he's like, oh yeah, he had Tommy John. Sorry. Forgot to let you guys know <laughs> about that. Um, so, but in this case, I unfortunately believe that Preller believes what he's saying. He thinks that because Tatis wants to go in the lineup today, which I believe, that he's ready to go in 10 days, which he's not ruling out. This happened in spring training. And then he lasted less than two weeks, and it happened again. My worry is that the Padres will bring him back in 10 days. And then four or five days later, this happens again, and then he's out for the year. Mm -hmm. So if I am the Padres, because it's so early, because you have this kid, Kim, who seems to be holding his own early on, why not just, hey, 10 days right now, another 10 days, and another 10 days. Let's give him a month off just to really try and strengthen that thing and then go from there. And by the way. Because on, on, honestly, I, we're, none of us here are medical experts except John. So you. do we not all think that if he comes back that this is not going to pop again? No, of course it's going to pop again. But here's here's the thing. Just this is a marketing issue now. I'm telling you, you sold hope to the fan base, which bought it all hook, line, and sinker. Why wouldn't we? Why would we not buy that the Padres were for real? They had an amazing year last year. They finally made it to the postseason. They wanted it. They got a chance to go toe to toe with the Dodgers. They got much, much better in the offseason, specifically in their starting pitching. And going back to last night, you Darvish with a really nice performance. But let me say this. Um, you keep trying to play him so long as you don't think you're doing any more damage and you know ultimately how it's got to be fixed. So if he goes out again and dislocates it again, whether it's throwing, sliding, you know, standing, dive, stand seeds, you know, adjusting his jock, whatever, whatever it is that, that hurts his shoulder next time, as long as you, the doctors tell you it's not going to get worse, let him go out and play. Because from a marketing standpoint, you, you need this kid on the field for as that's, long as you can. That's the part that I don't know and would love to know the true answer is what the doctor said. Can they avoid surgery like forever? Or is this him? He can come back, play, avoid it, kind of deal with it. And then at the end of the year, he's going to have to have surgery. Well, he's, that's honestly, the clarification. He, I, I, he honestly said think it's, they're not ruling anything out. That's what he said. We're not ruling anything out. Right. So surgery, surgery possible? Oh, well, we're not ruling anything out. I think this is a pain tolerance situation. How much pain can he take 
and how effective can he be with that pain? I think that's what this is more based on. Because I believe I that this surgery is going to happen in the offseason yeah. at some point because it has to. He's worth too much. I don't team. want my 21-year-old, $340 million superstar to be managing a dislocated shoulder type of pain. Like, I want him to manage this pain that I have right now because of the second injection. That I can deal with. Not my shoulder keeps popping out every single time I do a baseball move. See, That's not me, pain tolerance that I like. Right. To me, the other part of it is, is it's not pain tolerance for me. It's I know how this guy plays. He's going to dive. He's going to slide head first. He's going to swing violently. He He's going to throw the ball 100 miles an hour across the diamond. He's, he's going to tag up from third on a pop-up. Right. He's going to do all these things. He's going to get hurt. It's going to happen again and again. And it seems like it's loosened up now. Like, it happened in spring, but it happened throwing. By the but, way, it's his left shoulder. He throws with his right. But this isn't new that he's going to get hurt. The question is, how long will these injuries keep him out? No one's, ex again, I'll revisit this again. No one is expecting him to be Kyle Ripken. No one's expecting him to Iron Man his way through his career. We are more basing what they paid him on, on what he can do at when he's at optimum operating speed, how entertaining he can be. But how you see, I don't, people always thought, say that, and I don't have an issue if he takes a couple injuries here and there because he's trying super hard. Right. This was a swing. Trying super hard. Did you not see that? Did you not see the velocity? Then, or what about spring? What about spring training when he just threw a ball from shortstop? I told you. I think he's gonna have to do. He's gonna have to do this every single day that he plays. This well, isn't that he is going at 100 and trying to tag from third on a pop up right to the shortstop. This is legitimately basic baseball moves. Look, he's potentially he's potentially out for the whole year. I mean, look, I say potentially because I'm I'm going back to what Preller said. Not ruling anything out. The difference, because people say to me, they go, well, I don't understand. What's the difference? If Tatis is out for the next 10 days and Bellinger for the Dodgers is out for the next 10 days, why is it that you look at the Padres as if Tatis is gone, so are their, their chances at the World Series? Mm -hmm. Whereas if Bellinger's gone, why don't you feel the same way about the Dodgers? Two reasons. One, because I don't think Bellinger's out for very long. And two, because the Dodger roster is even that much deeper than the Padres. Do oh. I think that the Dodgers, do I think that the Dodgers are automatic World Series winners without Bellinger? Absolutely not. But which team do I think could overcome a superstar injury more? The Dodgers with Bellinger, the Padres with Tatis? I'd still have to go with the Dodgers. Alex, show everybody this, this Bellinger injury. They're calling it a calf injury now. Let's take a look at what happened here. For those of you that are listening, we're just watching. And Bellinger is headed towards the base. I got to see it again. That's a broke leg, man. No, man. That is not a, a, a let's take a look. He's okay. So his left mm, look at that. foot hits first base and he gets spiked by the Oakland A's pitcher. I think that is. That's correct. And he goes down. And that, that is a spot. That, that is like a and his, surface also injury. His that ain't no but also spike. if you see the second if you see the second replay mm -hmm. his left ankle yep buckles kind of rolls a weird way yeah. and that's where they were concerned that there was some sort of fracture or mm -hmm. or or tear right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. oh I, I hit the wrong button but uh yeah. yeah you see that yeah i do he's also but it's a good point scott that you bring up that i think that some of our listeners especially are going to be like yo what the hell like so Tatis is out 10 days and you're freaking out and Bellinger's day-to-day -day likely going on the injured list too and you're not freaking out about the Dodgers. So it's simply because that you think that the Dodgers are that much deeper than Bellinger, I mean, than the Padres? Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. listen, if this if this were Mookie Betts, I'd say their number one guy. This could be this could be a big trouble. Bellinger's like the number two, number three but guy. Bellinger... Bellinger let, was also the MVP was. in a full season. That's right, two years ago. Right, right. A so, like we season. say, like yes, yesterday we were we were talking about who's one and who's two, and everybody's like, there is no one and two. It's one A and one B, and I think the same thing with the Dodgers. I think Bellinger's one A, and Mookie Betts is one B, or flip it. I don't think there is a one or two guy. I well, think Bellinger is equally as important as Betts. Well, look, regardless, all I'm saying to you is is that I just happen to think that the Dodgers pitching one through five is better than the Padres one through five. One through three, one through three. Right, that's that, the argument. We got an though. argument. No, no, but I'm. But it, the question is, how do you overcome things like this? But, but again, and I want to move on because I want to get to some golf stuff before Charlie Hoffman gets here. The bottom line is, 
Tatis has an injury that's going to require surgery. Thus far, Bellinger looks like he got spiked and his his leg is cut up, and that's the issue. So I think that's the big difference. The Padres have a deeper one through nine lineup from a day to day basis than the than the Dodgers do. I can't believe you said that. I love what you're doing. Padres also. I love Padres also have 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 Tatis. Tatis is hurt. Grisham's hurt. Nola's hurt. Then Nelson Lamette is hurt. So the Padres, in theory, will be better soon. I you like changed. what Browner's doing. You changed, though. man. You I changed. Like what Brown, I like what Browner's doing. I do you like changed, this. Man. I love what he's doing. Wow. Browner, Browner wants to be the guy who defends the Padres at all costs. Mm-hmm. It is a great way to ingratiate yourself to the San Diego mm-hmm. audience. I love what you're doing. Keep <laughs> it up. All right, coming up. So I was listening to the radio last night. I was listening to 1090 last night. I was listening to the Browner and Burt show. I call it the Burt and Browner show, but I know the official title is Browner and Burt. And uh, something happened along the way during the broadcast. And I sent a text to both Browner and Burt. And the next thing I know, I got a text message from Burt, like his feelings were hurt. Like, what, did you not like the show tonight? Was it not good? So Burt Grossman will be here. Let's dig into this. The always interesting Burt Grossman is next. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Catch Kaplan and crew Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. If you've listened to Scott Kaplan the last 20 years, you know one thing. He likes to stir up some sh**. A new generation of radio. The all-new and mightier 1090. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side-by-side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Attention, all dogs, cats, horses, tortoises, birds, pigs, and all other pets. Get your family members to sit, stay, and watch Animal Zone every Saturday at 9 p.m. right here on this channel and at animalzone.org. Tune in Saturdays at 9 p.m. to watch Animal Zone right here on Your View. City in Motion is brought to you by McDonald's. Stop by your local participating McDonald's now through April 25th and make a donation or visit walkforkids.org to support. Hi, I'm Vince Bryson, CEO of Ronald McDonald House Charities of Southern California. Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Walk for Kids. coronavirus pandemic will not stop our show because we are still going to walk for these kids. You guys want to do the walk for kids virtually this year? Yeah! Today is walk for kids, you guys, um, virtually. So we love it, love it, love it. Let's get this walk started. We are going to start. So I'm going to be walking around my backyard. Doing the 5K walk. We're here in front of the beautiful Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. So we are getting ready to do lap Three. We're here to send our support. I love the excitement. I love the energy. Let's keep it going. If you want to know the reason why I'm walking, it's because I care about the kids and the families that stay at our house. I walk for the Los Angeles Ron McDonough House for kids like me, so they can have a place to call their home away from home. To me, the Ronald McDonald House means love, care, hope, 
and support. The families and children of RMHC need our help and support now more than ever. So thank you for joining our virtual walk and continuing to support our Ronald McDonald House even during these difficult times. Thank you so much for coming together, for showing that we can unite and be together even though we're not at our respective locations. Thank you for participating in this virtual walk. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for all your help and support and stay well. Ronald McDonald House Charities of SoCal gives families with sick kids the best medicine, each other. Stop by your local McDonald's today and make a donation or visit walkforkids.org to support. City in Motion, highlighting great things in our community like Ronald McDonald House Charities. Give families with sick kids the best medicine, each other. Rich Eisen here inviting you to catch my show, The Rich Eisen Show, on our flagship radio station, The Mightier 1090. We're on every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time. you like what you hear. If not, that's just a highest to bad. A new generation of radio, the all-new and Mightier 1090. We have a term for a typical cheese-filled, grease-covered, regret-inducing takeout. That's why dinner from El Pollo Loco is always fire-grilled, freshly prepared, feel-good food. The $20 Familia Dinner from El Pollo Loco. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community boot camp. The boot camp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, quarantine 15. Say adios to the quarantine bod with pollo fit bowls made with fire grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. It's time now for your Sports in a Minute. I'm Haley Stasiak. San Diego State softball will be matching up with UC Santa Barbara this weekend. The Aztecs are looking to carry the momentum from last weekend's series finale win against Boise State. Maggie Bainlett notched her fifth complete game shutout of the season against the Broncos, giving up just four hits, no walks, and striking out six. On the other side of this weekend's series, UCSB is coming off of their first series sweep of the season against Cal Poly. The player to watch in this one is freshman Madeline McNally. Against Cal Poly, McNally went 3 for 4 with a double and 2 RBI. McNally is the Big West batting leader and leads the team in triples with 3, runs with 21, and a 471 batting average. McNally also has 9 stolen bases on the year. The three-game series between the Aztecs and the Gauchos gets started on Friday at UC Santa Barbara. That's your sports in a minute. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Attention, all dogs, cats, horses, tortoises, birds, pigs, and all other pets. Get your family members to sit, stay, and watch Animal Zone every Saturday at 9 p.m. right here on this channel and at AnimalZone.org. Tune in Saturdays at 9 p.m. to watch Animal Zone right here on Your View. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight. 
powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. All right, great friends. On a Wednesday afternoon, it is Kaplan and crew. We are live on the radio right now on 1090. We are streaming on YouTube. You can get involved in our YouTube chat. Comment down below. All of our sponsors are down there. And by the way, I'm a 51-year-old grown man. Do I have to really ask you for a thumbs up and a like? But I guess I do, okay? I guess I do. So Yes. Yes. So, um, okay, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're on any of the audio podcast platforms and you're catching up over the weekend, today's Wednesday, let's say it's Saturday or Sunday, do me a favor. Make sure you tweet at me, at Scott Kaplan, so that I know that you're listening to Wednesday's show on a Saturday afternoon by way of example. So along with Big Brown and Grande, right. it's Kaplan and crew on like every platform known to man. So wherever you are, that's where we're at. Okay. I was mentioning uh, Tiger Woods, and I want to talk about Tiger because it's, it's Masters week and he's not there. I'll get to it in one second. But before I do, I want to update as the show goes on today grande's condition if you're just getting with us alex had his second covid vaccine alex did this happen this morning or did this happen yesterday 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 so you had your second covid vaccination what time yesterday um in the middle of our show so like four ish okay so less than 24 hours later at what point did you start not feeling good? Uh, last night, I got in my own head. I thought it was hitting me last night, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't. I just got in my own head. Mm -hmm. And I felt fine. I, I, I watched the Laker game, and I did my podcast, and I made dinner, and I went grocery. I did everything that I needed to do. No big deal. It was this morning, I slept on my arm where I got the shot, and they said, don't do that, and I did it. So I, a little sore, not as definitely not as bad as the first time. The first time I described it as like it felt like Shaq punched me. Mm -hmm. This is more like a, I don't know, like a little, I don't know, like Schroeder punched me, basically. <laughs> and uh, um, and right now I feel this morning it hit me, the the headache hit me first, then the tiredness kicked in, and then my back started hurting like like super sore, and uh, that's that's it hit me all this morning, and right now. Because I drank coffee, the cold brew, nitro cold brew, I blasted it. And then we're just talking and we're going. I think the, the adrenaline's in right now. So I don't feel as tired as I did when we started the show. Mm -hmm. But the, the arm hurts and the headache and the back's still there. Okay. So um, just to let everybody know, for anybody that's you know trying to figure out what they're going to do with vaccinations and stuff, um, that's Alex's second. And like many other people, um, he's uh, young and healthy body seems to be fighting it off and the shot made him feel not so great all of this though is 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 manageable like completely and it's maybe because people have started sending me their hashtag pray for me so mm -hmm. maybe that's influencing this whole thing mm -hmm. but all everything that i feel right now is 100 percent manageable yeah completely yeah you can so work my mom got messed up mom got she had Mo, moderna and she got real messed up dude she was like bedridden for like five hours mm -hmm. i'm not that at all five hours not five days, not five months, five hours. Yeah, it's all hours. Yeah. It's all hours. And are you, yeah. are, did you get Moderna or did you get uh, Pfizer? No, 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 no. Come on. Why do you Pinky's say like that? Up, Pinky's up, baby. I got Pfizer. Yeah. I'm high class. Yeah. Why do you say it like what? Moderna. Moderna. What do you say like that? Say it, Alex, and, and then like, like with a little, you know, Hispanic dialect. Oh, Moderna? Moderna. See? It's muy bien. You got to roll those R's. See? Moderna. Pfizer. Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is uh, Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> After my Johnson and Johnson shot, I'm going to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. All right. I so don't know anybody with a Johnson and Johnson shot. No, me I haven't. It's I, hard to find. Is it? You know, I yeah. actually thought I wanted the Johnson and Johnson shot because I thought that just get one shot and be done. And I found it and I was going to get it at a CVS in Encinitas. But um, then I got the Pfizer and I decided yes. to go for the double whammy. And so what I've been told, at least, you know, those that are doing the research, not me, um, that the Janssen and Janssen is like 75 percent, whereas 
El Fizar, Pfizer, mm -hmm. how you say it? Pfizer. Pfizer. The Pfizer is like 100. Yeah. See. The, the CDC just released a report last week that it is 100% effective in preventing serious disease. Mm -hmm. And you do not get it, coronavirus, or spread coronavirus for at least six months. Mm -hmm. So it's like better than they thought. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you'll notice but I, when you say CVS had Johnson and Johnson. See, um, I believe that pharmacies are the one carrying Johnson and Johnson. See, majority. See, C V S A. Tienes Johnson and Johnson. C V S A. See, see, yes, yes. Tengo Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. See, muy bien, muy bien. Now, I want you to look at Browner here for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to look at him on screen. For those of you that are listening, you can't see him. But in his Seven Mile Casino podcast shed with his camouflaged uh, Chicago Bulls baseball cap on, he's got his hands over his eyes like, what are these two fools talking about? And you know what that gesture says to me, Alex? You know what that body Vaccine. language says to me? Vaccine envy. Yeah. Well, no, no. To me, the opposite anti-vaxxer <laughs> wow no browner browner has come on the show and said he's looking for the johnson and johnson he wants he, oh, he wants oh he said many weeks ago when oh, i told man. you guys that well we were now eligible he's like i, I need to find me the johnson and johnson or something like that he wanted went, the one shot i went down to balboa park when, when they had it they had it at balboa park i went down there what you mean i'm not anti-vax i'm not anti-vax at all oh browner yeah. browner quiero get it get it if I, decide, if I Browner decide, if I decide, see Browner Browner's going to be like Johnson Browner's Johnson. more of a, see you see Browner's more of a Jared Dudley, where he's a he questions the vaccine and doesn't want his business out there. I'm more of a Carl Anthony Towns. I take pictures. I'll show you. I'll tell you when I got the vaccine. Yep, you know? same, same. Me too. I don't know if I'm really Carl Anthony Towns, but I'll just tell you right now, I'm I'm I You're was a Cal Corver. I, I don't know, man. All I know is I was surprised to be congratulated when I got it. Okay. And I feel like I'm doing the right thing by having gotten it. Okay. So the first shot I got, I got mine at the, the Grossmont Center, the Super Center, mm -hmm. and in a food court. Very weird. Um, the first time they were a lot more chipper and a lot more cheery. Mm -hmm. And this time I only got told congratulations by the nurse that gave me the shot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, am I, is this a second shot? Like, hey, get ready. You're about to get messed up. There's not a lot of congratulations coming towards you. Or if it was a little different this time around. But still, the Grossmont Center, if anybody else got their shot there, you know, they 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 put you in an observance room to make sure that you don't, like, have a crazy allergic reaction. They At Grossmont, they put you in a food court. <laughs> it's like, wait right here. Yeah. You get a <laughs> taco. Weird. Yeah, I, I was at the Del Mar I got Fairgrounds. Wetzel's pretzels. Oh, you did? There you go. Yeah. I did. I got, mine, I got my shot at Del Mar at the fairgrounds, and everything's, you know, in your car. And it's like being in a line at like Knott's Berry Farms or Disneyland where you know how like you're corralled through, mm -hmm. right? So that's you, you're corralled, but through your car, you go into the barn where the horses are during the summer, okay? You get your shot and then they put you out in the parking lot and they put something on your car and they go, wait here for 15 minutes. They come back 15 minutes later, like, how you doing? You're like, great. They're like, get out of here. And you leave. Peace. Yeah, peace yeah. out. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right, let me, uh, let me say this, that I want to send some special shout-outs and thanks to our people from Mountain thank Trust. Thank you for checking on me, by the way. Oh, Sorry. You're welcome. Thank you for checking on me. Uh, I want to say thank you to Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. You know, Gary Cooper was on yesterday, <laughs> and I heard a bit of Gary's conversation with us on the radio, and I texted him. I said, you sound awesome on the radio, dude. And he said, you know what, Scott? I'm having so much fun doing this with you guys because what he does is he comes in. We wind up all talking some sports. And then Gary takes off and after giving us a little bit of an update as to what's going on in the world of real estate. And I find it to be uh, very valuable. So I want to just say to everybody, look, um, if you are thinking about buying a house right now, I know it's the height of the market. It's crazy. Inventory's low. Prices go on the rise because so many people make offers. It is very tough if you're looking to buy a house right now. On the flip side, if you're looking to sell a house right now, dude, you are in control. Okay, if you are trying to sell a house right now, you have more leverage today than perhaps you've ever had before as a homeowner. If you're looking to refinance um, because you hadn't done it before and you're thinking about rates going up, you may also want to talk to Gary about this. So whatever kind of real estate related issues you might have, 
talk to our guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Hey, Alex, what happened yesterday? You said that uh, fiance mm-hmm. wanted to look at a place across the street in North Park. Is that place truly for sale or what'd you guys find out? Oh, we're not there yet. We said, like I said, self like you always say how Gary is walking me through the process. He's literally holding my hand because I am self-employed. There's so many different things that come at you that you don't even know about. We're still figuring me out. Mm. So once we figure me out, then we'll, so I, unfortunately that place is, if it is on the market, we're not there yet. Mm. But I, I tell you what, if we were ready to go and we were locked in, we would have told Gary offer up because that place is perfect for what we're looking for. Is your uh, fiance angry with me about your self-employment status? No, because I told her this is going to get weird and messy. Like the amount of paperwork and and things that I have, like my, you know, your tax returns, like for normal people, there's just a couple pages. Mm. Like my tax returns are like the size of the Bible. Well, how so. many, uh, how many different places you, you got? going right now how many different coming with income yeah in 2020 five sources of income five five that are on the table all right <laughs> <laughs> well good luck man <laughs> hey if you got messy complicated stuff like this like i have like alex has uh call gary cooper 858-376-1299 he can help you out 858-376-1299 okay so Today's Wednesday, and tomorrow we'll start the Masters. And I don't know about you guys, like the Masters is the one golf tournament, the Masters in the U.S. Open, are the, really the only two that I will say, hey, I got to be there. I, I really want to see what happens on Sunday. You know, like on Sunday afternoon, you're going to have, you're going to find it. I'm hard pressed to watch a Laker game at 1230 on a Sunday, you know, um, I'm hard pressed to watch a college basketball game or a Padres or a Dodgers baseball game. You're not going to find me on a Sunday afternoon sitting around watching TV, but the masters is a little different, but I will say this, that um, it seems like the masters which just happened a few months ago. And I don't remember exactly what month it was. Do you guys, was it October, November, something like that? Oh, let me look it up. It was it was only like five months ago. This is April, so we're in month four. That would have been December. I'm telling you, it was like November or something, you know? So here's a question, and this is this is what I want to talk about. Now that Tiger Woods will not play this year in the Masters. August. Oh, it was in August? Okay, so August. Okay, so how many months ago is that? Seven, no, sorry, ago? sorry, sorry. Hmm. November... November 12th to 15th. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds more November like the 12th to 15th. Yeah. It sounds more like it. So, so now that Tiger Woods, obviously car accident and Palos Verdes. And, and for those of you that, uh, you know, that live up in that area and hopefully you're watching our TV show at night on channel 118 in Palos Verdes. Uh, we know Tiger not going to be there. We knew that months ago, obviously when he got into this car accident in February. Somebody posted a question on Sided. Will you watch the Masters now that Tiger Woods will not be playing in it? And I'm guessing for most people, the answer is probably not. Like, no, Tiger's not in it. Nah, probably not watching. I'm going to watch regardless. I'm curious. I'm interested. I've never been to Augusta. I've never played that golf course. I would like to one day. I don't know. There's something special about the Masters. It's a tradition unlike any other. By the way, how about Jim Nance in all these commercials with Samuel L. Jackson and Charles Barkley and Spike Lee, where he's the token white guy? You know, is he the token white guy or is he Jim so. Nance, the the uh, the voice of sports? Oh, you know, oh, he's that. He's or that. Yeah. or is this a bunch of friends driving to the Final Four? I mean, that could be the thing too. Could be, could be. So, um, hello, friends. You know, welcome to Augusta. A tradition unlike any other. Let's go to the Butler cabin. Dustin Johnson. Wow, big win. Dustin Johnson's the favorite. Browner, I'll throw it to you. So, Whoa. no Tiger. Any Browner? No. God, no. 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 No, man. Come on now. You know, you, you come on, man. You set me up. You you know damn well I watch this. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, and if he was playing, I wouldn't watch till Sunday either. This ain't, listen, listen. No. 
<laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> he goes, man, you set me up. <laughs> like, like, what are you guilty of? You're not watching. It's no big deal. Right. It's all good. No big deal. It's all no, good, dog. Man. No, man. This ain't for me, bro. Yeah, I get it. I, it's a great golf. It's awesome for people who love it. You know, I need to get some clubs, man. I need to talk to our guy, get some clubs. Maybe I need to... clubs for six foot seven people. See, that's why I don't play. This game is height. Is, I is think they, they might. I don't know. It's heightest. Give me a six foot seven golfer right now. Mm. Ain't one. You know why? Because it's it's against us. It's against tall people. That's why I don't watch. That's mm -hmm. why I don't play. Well, you know, I think it's funny you say that. You know, let's let's uh, get you some golf clubs. Jason Finley is going to be listening and watching, and he's going to think to himself, "Brown, I'm not going to get you golf clubs if you're never going to use them and play." But I will say this. Um, Phil Blackmar. Who he play for? Six foot seven golfer. Okay. Really? Really? I will listen. I will back in the day. I will tell our people at Callaway this. If I ever do get on the golf course, you're gonna have another, you're gonna have a a, a what the, I'm uh, I'm gonna be like uh what's another I'm gonna like a lion, lion browner. What does that mean? Like, like Tiger, Tiger Woods. Woods, lion browner. That's right. It's so dumb. You ain't gotta like it. People didn't like Tiger Woods at first. He's like, What's his name's Eldrick? I wouldn't use Eldrick. that either. What? Eldrick. That's what I said, ain't it? No. What I say? You say Eldrick. Eldrick. Sink. Eldrick. Stuart Sink, six foot four. That ain't six. Sir six. Nick. Sir Nick Faldo, six foot three. Ernie mm -hmm. Els, six foot three. Mm -mm. There's tall golfers. Listen, that ain't tall. That's little to me. I look over those people. I can see past their heads. I that ain't tall. <laughs> if I can see past your hair, you're not tall. <laughs> So, okay, so Dustin Johnson is the favorite, and there's no Tiger Woods, which means that a lot of casual types are not exactly going to be interested. Okay, I got that. The um, L.A. County sheriffs have put out a report about what caused Tiger Woods' accident in February in Palos Verdes. And people were starting to ask questions because the police seem to be very like quiet about the whole thing. No, we can't tell you the details. We, 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 we'd love to, but we can't. Why not? Privacy. What? What are you talking about privacy? A highly public figure got into a near fatal car crash, single car crash. This person has a history of driving under the influence and Basically, because we're all a bunch of nosy busybodies, we want answers. Listen, I want to thank I want to thank the uh, whatever police department that was for doing their due diligence and taking their time and let let not rush into judgment or rushing out the facts. They let everything play out. They gave Tiger Woods his privacy like a regular person would. They treated this as any other person or any other situation. So hats off to them. Because a lot of people say I'm against cops. I'm not against cops. I have a. I love they, it when did cops they, do the did, right thing. Did, did they? Did they do that? Is that what they did? They took their the, the time. They did their due diligence, and they treated Tiger Woods just like any other person. Or, or did they do the exact opposite of that, which is treat him like a celebrity, not put out information that would be commonly asked and potentially answered, especially given the track record. I mean, did they really treat him like a normal person or do they treat him like a superstar? I kind of feel like they treated him like a superstar. Listen, if you get a couple of, uh, I don't know, road run-ins, that, that's not really a, a track record. He fell asleep once at the wheel. No, no, there's been a couple of him and um, Well, if a, woman, a, if a uh, woman trying to hit you with a golf club, that doesn't count. Oh, it doesn't? No, 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 no. Okay, no. That's, gotcha. just a little, that's a little lawn accident. Gotcha. I have a what is he doing? Ooh. All right. To Tiger Woods. Okay. Whoa. What is he doing? What is you doing? 83 miles per hour in a 45 zone, bro, in an SUV? Come on, y'all. In an SUV, in a, in a Hyundai. You're not even in a good SUV. You're in a Hyundai. Well, really? What I, thought it, was, I thought it was called something else. I thought it was a... Uh... Some Sonata. Other, no, no, no. It was, there was another name for the, the Genesis. No. Oh, a Genesis. Yeah. I yeah, thought. But that's a Hyundai, isn't it? I don't. I no. thought it was its own manufacturer. Are you sure? No. Listen, listen. 
A Hyundai Genesis is the name of the car. Well, don't, why don't you just look up the Genesis manufacturer? I do. I don't think it was a Hyundai that he was driving. Don't try to make him the big, the, the, a criminal for speeding. We all speed. Why are you yeah. guys trying to do the Tiger? No, 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 that's but, felony but, speeding. That's felony speeding. We all felony speed. Between, speed. Dude, listen to me. When you when it's I, forty five and you do sixty, you're getting a ticket. When you do forty five and you're doing fifty seven, you're getting a ticket. But when you're doing forty five in a place that, according to those that that know the area. Pretty pretty tough conditions there. When you're doing 83, and by the way, they say the car was accelerating at the time of the crash. This according to the, the black box of the car. 83 miles an hour in a 45 zone? Ridiculous. Dude, 80, Ridiculous. 83 on the freeway is going fast. Come on, dog. I just think we need to accept that we all drive a little fast, a little over the Not limit. 83 and and I, 45. That's all this was, man. That's all no, this bro. was. What y'all trying to, why y'all trying to paint this man as some kind of reckless driver? Okay, because he, he is. He, he fell asleep at the wheel once. And then he got attacked at the wheel. He was on once. drugs. He got attacked at the wheel once, and then he was just because you know, he's a cheater. He was going a little too fast, and now he's reckless. He's going a little wow. too fast. They should revoke his license. Wow. wow. What, did he, what did he? What did he drive Wait, to a farmer's guy, market? A, this guy shouldn't even drive a golf cart at this point. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. All right, stick around, everybody. We got a lot more to get to today. Sure. And let's, Alex seems to be feeling much better after his second vaccination. Everybody hang out. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego. Your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Hey, Dave Smith here. Make sure you listen to my show on the Mightier 1090, 6 to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday night. The only local sports talk in all of Southern California on the weekends right here on the Mightier 1090. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side-by-side -side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Thank you for interviewing with us. Tell me a little something about yourself. What are your greatest strengths? Well, my differences are my strengths. Those of us with intellectual and developmental disabilities are highly motivated. We are creators. We are leaders and innovators. We are changing the face of work for the better, one customer at a time. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm confident that you would make an incredible addition to our team. It is time we start building a workforce that is diverse, inclusive, and equitable. A workforce that recognizes that our greatest strengths lie in our differences. Thank you. Join us at deliveringjobs.org. And cut. That's the wrap. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60 second timeout with Haley Stasiak. A collective sigh of relief today for Padres fans. Padres GM AJ Preller announced Tuesday afternoon that Fernando Tatis will not need surgery right now. Tatis will go on the 10 day injured list and hopefully see a reduction in the inflammation and an increase in stability in that left shoulder that he dislocated on Monday. The Padres hope is that Tatis can return as soon as April 16th for the Friars first series of the season against the Dodgers. On Tuesday night, Yu Darvish bounced back from his shaky opening day debut. Darvish went six innings, allowing one run on three hits and notching seven strikeouts in the Padres' 3-1 win against the Giants. In the deal that brought Darvish to San Diego, the Padres also got catcher Victor Caratini. Caratini held to lift the Padres to a win last night with a two-run homer in the seventh inning. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. 
It's Pharrell here, inviting you to catch my shows on the Mightier 1090. We're on twice every Monday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific. Trust me, all the other sports stations are sleeping with your wife. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community bootcamp. The bootcamp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Time now for Kaplan and Crew tonight's Community Connect. Step up. You know, we're breaking that stereotype of what a homeless person is, this subculture of society. We're just brothers, sisters, mom, dad, grandmas, and grandpas being part of the solution instead of part of the problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, left hand side. We make sure that there's uh, no drug dealing, drug use, encampments around their facilities or anywhere in our neighborhood. We self-police, and that's all a testament to the folks here that used to be out there. Watch out for sharp objects, ladies and gentlemen. Ed's, uh, you know, once again, he's a perfect example of the caliber of the men and women that have been outside on the streets. Here in San Diego for over 50 years, have worked all my life since 1975. But suddenly uh, I had a stroke, and I lost all muscle control. One of the things you never think will happen to you, but it can. The onus of responsibility need to go to our folks like Ed, people you've seen here that have tremendous skill and give them the opportunity to shine. It's that peer-to-peer -peer support, talking to the folks out there and bringing folks in here to start the process. Let's go. We are in the hope business. What we do every day and what we've done for 40 years is to provide kids and families going through critical illnesses hope that tomorrow's gonna be a better day. My favorite wish is the next one because that is the power of our organization, is to bring hope to kids who are going through something right now. And hope can't wait. So people can get involved now by donating resources. They can donate in kind. They can donate their time as volunteers. They can donate dollars because kids are still getting diagnosed with illnesses that qualify for Make-A-Wish every day. So people can visit us online at sandiego.wish.org. They can visit us and follow us on social media. There are so many ways to get connected and people can help in many, many different ways. We need your support now more than ever because illness doesn't take a vacation and it doesn't take a break because of COVID-19. Kaplan and Crew tonight's Community Connect is fueled by the Mightier 1090. Kaplan and Crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and the surrounding areas. When California weather conditions create a high risk for wildfires, electric companies may shut off power in some neighborhoods as a precaution. These public safety power shutoffs could affect homes and businesses and interrupt power to your home, devices, and even our Cox facilities. During a PSPS, we'll work hard to keep customers connected to their Cox services in conditions that are safe for you, our employees, and our community. For information and updates, follow us on Twitter and visit Cox.com. 
Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio, SoCal Sports Talk.